Welcome back to Let's Code. I'm Chris Biscardi, and today we've got a preview into what's coming in Bevy 0.10, I think, specifically Stageless, which has been a long time coming. Here we're looking at the RFC, which Alice submitted over a year ago at this point, and we can click into the rendered version. Now, Bevy is built on top of a number of building blocks. One of those is called Stages. Stages are currently pretty fundamental to the way that systems and commands are run and executed. If, for example, you wanted to insert an entity, you would have to use commands to do it, but it doesn't get inserted right away. You have to wait to the end of the stage, which then syncs all the commands. Here we see a number of the core stages, but there are also startup stages as well as asset stages. For a very quick TLDR, we're basically getting rid of these. So the RFC itself, we won't be getting into the nitty gritty today. This is just going to be a high level overview to give you an idea of what the current situation looks like and what might and what we might be getting in 0.10 so you can prepare your games. So the RFC reads, users often have a hard time working with Bevy's system scheduling API. The core building blocks, that is stages, run criteria, and states are presented as independent but actually have tons of hidden internal coupling. More on that in a little bit. You can imagine since this is an RFC, the internal coupling comes with problems. Otherwise, we wouldn't have an RFC to solve it. This RFC in particular comprises an entire redesign of the system scheduling solution inside of Bevy. And because it's such a massive change, it's actually been baking for a long time. In a minute, we'll get to defining some of these terms, but I'll give you the summary. The RFC proposes storing schedules in a resource. This is a normal Bevy resource, if you're familiar with those. It proposes making system sets subgraphs instead of containers. It proposes making exclusive systems normal systems, which affects things like fixed time steps and state transitions, as we'll see in a bit. It proposes replacing run criteria with basically if expressions, right? Bool returning conditions is if this true, else false. And finally, of course, as we just said, the removal of these stages. So why is this happening? First of all, there are issues because we wouldn't have an RFC if there weren't problems. The first one listed in the RFC is that users have a hard time deciding which stage to put a system in. If we look at the core stages, you can see how easily this could get you into a bit of a pickle. Core stages have first, pre-update, update, post-update, post and last. And unless you know what happens in each of these stages specifically, you could choose to put something in a post-update and then need something to run after the post-update. Plugins have to decide which stages their systems go in ahead of time. So a user using a plugin can't decide when something is, say, set up or run or executed because the plugin itself is determining that. The run criteria can't really be composed. So if you wanna run a system in a particular state and on a time step, that's kind of hard to do. Implementing things like turn-based game logic is kind of rough. Because of the lack of composability in the overall components, it's hard to make use of the extra capabilities that the current model actually tries to provide. And there's quite a lot of API. You can, for example, add a system, add a system set, add a system to a stage, add a system with a run criteria, add a system set to a stage, etc. So the RFC concludes with, unfortunately, even with our best efforts, these issues are deeply ingrained and require a lot of work to fix. So if you're unfamiliar with any of the terms I just used, a system is an instance of a function that can access sort of the world state so you can make queries for objects and then operate on them. A system set then is sort of a graph of systems that run in say a particular order. A condition is that run criteria that we earlier talked about where it's basically an if expression, if this run the system, otherwise don't run the system. Systems can be dependent on other systems to run. So if system A sets something up and then system B operates on it, that's called a dependency. A schedule is the executable system graph. So we talked about the system sets, which are subgraphs. This is the entire graph. And to schedule something specifies when and under what conditions some system will actually run. Then we didn't mention executor or ready. Uh, there does need to be something that actually decides when to run the systems, and that's called the executor. And a system is, quote, ready to run when all of its dependencies have completed. And at this point, the RFC starts to dive into what it looks like to use this new API or what it could look like. But I'm going to skip that in favor of a video after 0.10 comes out so that we can actually talk about how to use these things. And that brings us down to the migration strategy, which is why this video is even being made today. There are three phases to getting Stageless merged in and usable in a Bevy release. After this RFC was merged, work started on adding all of this new functionality in a new module. This comes with a migration guide for the new API, which is one of the things I really love about Bevy in the PRs. 
they always come with documentation. So if there's ever a PR that you're interested in, there's almost certainly documentation in the code for that PR that you can read to figure out how it should actually work. Phase two is porting over the engines plugins to use the new stageless module. And then stage three is going to replace the old module with the new module. So this will mostly be removing the extension trait that was added to enable the first stage, giving the normal names back to the functions that need them and verifying the migration guide. This is interesting because phase one is done. This code is merged. So if we hop over to the PR, we can see that 6587 is add bevy ECS schedule V3 module. This work is largely done by Mani Wani, who I believe goes by joy in the bevy discord. And if we look at the commits in main, we can see add bevy ECS schedule V3 module committed two hours ago. That's right, this video is being made two hours after the merge. <laughs> <laughs> I am just that excited about this functionality that got in. So what might it look like to use this kind of stuff? Up until this point, the option for what was being implemented in this PR and in this RFC was relegated to a third-party crate called IES Loopless. You can see that the APIs are not exactly the same, but this crate drew extremely heavy inspiration from that RFC and allowed us a way to use those APIs, or at least facsimiles of those APIs before it was merged into the main project. So I've got a game here that I am working on updating. It's actually one of the workshops for Rust Adventure. It's Snake. And Snake, if you've ever played it, operates on a fixed time step. But I also wanted to use game states to represent whether we were playing or whether to show the menu. So excuse the colors here. They're a little bit bright just because I've been working on something new. But here's our menu. So we're in game state menu right now. And if I click new game, the game will start. And if I can, I can't get my keyboard ready fast enough. <laughs> can't play my own game. If we click new game, it goes into game state playing, at which point you can play snake and eventually lose at snake, which transitions us back into game state menu. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but the way that this works is not a smooth transition. It is a system running on a fixed time step to determine where the snake goes next, which results in that nice jerky animation that going from point A to point B, cell A to cell B, that everybody's used to when playing snake. So to do that with IS loopless, because the other scheduling V3 APIs aren't out yet, we would have to add a loopless state. In this case, it's game state menu, because I don't want to, you know, start you out playing the game. We add a fixed time step of 100 milliseconds and a name for what is effectively the fixed time step stage because IES loopless still operates on top of the old bevy paradigm, not the new stageless stuff. And then we add a fixed time step system using that stage name with a system that runs when we're in the playing state. So this tick function, this tick system, will only run when we're in the playing state and it will run on a fixed time step of 100 milliseconds. I could way slow this down, for example, if I upped it to 1000. And if I hit new game, you can see how slow this snake actually moves now. It's every second instead of what was previously every 100 milliseconds. And this is actually fun because I get to test whether I implemented the uh, directional controls correctly. <laughs> if I can press something before uh, the next tick. But this kind of combination of run conditions on a game state with a fixed time step is hard to do in the current state of Bevy. And that's sort of what stageless is, how long it's been in production or in development, I guess is the proper term, and what it's going to bring us. It's going to bring us more flexibility when it comes to how we define when our systems run, in what states they run, how often they run, and the ability to compose some of those APIs. It should make things like fixed time step, like we had in the snake example, as well as turn-based simulations easier to build. And we can look forward to basically the core set of work being over. Phase one, as I understand it, was the majority of kind of heavy review, heavy design. Uh, we need to get this right in this section work. Whereas phase two and three are kind of like maybe a bit more tedious and uh, mechanical more refactorings, whereas all of the design work has been done and all of the implementation of that design has largely been accomplished in this new module. So that's what we have to look forward to, at least one of the things that hopefully will get merged in for Bevy 0.10. We will see if it comes out, and if it does, expect a video on it. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.